So to give us some context around what year that was, what year was the, what were you, were you in the eighth grade? <clears throat> My brother, you are making me work right now. <laughs> so we're trying to see who was out musically. So, you know, I was in the, it was in the nineties. So I'll put it to you this way. When, when I was in the eighth grade, the groups that we looked up to yeah. was Jodeci and okay. Boys. So are we so, talking about their first album? In ninety one, so this uh, is Forever My Lady and and Motown. Well, too. well, when they came out with that album, I was a little younger. I wasn't in La Day yet when they came out with their first album. I wasn't. We weren't. That hadn't started yet when the album came out. By the time they got to their second album, so we were the Mad Band and two albums. That was about ninety three. Ninety three. Okay, was the, is that what it was? Okay, so. Yeah. Yeah, we, 93, we 94. Okay, so 94, that, that sounds, that's how 94 yeah. is, Sean. But where by the time that album came along, we were La Day. Like, we were La Day. We, were up and, we had a record deal by the time that, no, we, uh, by the, that second album was out. Yeah, I think we had a, I think we had a record deal by okay, the time so this album was out. Yeah. So then, uh, how did, you then what happened in high school then i guess eighth grade people would want to know okay are you saying the, the four of you guys were in the same school no so we all went to the same church that <laughs> we met that, that's why i'm saying the foundation was literally the church um we my brother when it, when Lade first started my brother was in it my big brother was in it shout out okay. to eli the third trey and there was a talent show in brooklyn and so uh myself my brother and my my man Darren, who's one of my greatest friends to this day, um, also lived in Queens. We were my brother was in a talent show. He was with a a group. He wasn't taking it seriously. He was just you know mm -hmm. they were in a talent was just singing in a talent show you know. Mm -hmm. And me, Darren, and Trey, we used to sing at Darren's house. We just used to get together and just sing. We weren't serious, you know. They were. I'm in the eighth grade, but they're like. They're like 18. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I was the youngest by far, you know. So when I would the tag along, I was the tag along with my brother. So oh. okay. we'd sing at friend's house, harmonize. And then ultimately one day we went to a rehearsal, bro. We went to a rehearsal and my brother was singing with this group and they were trying to do Stay by Jodeci. And the group couldn't get the harmony. And so Darren, myself, and my brother, we said, yo, let's show them how the harmony goes. We do it in the car all the time and at the house. So we did this. We did stay as like a three-part harmony, the forget about yesterday because I want you so bad. We did that part. And one of the guys from that group, I don't remember the name of the group, but one of the guys from the group said, oh, that doesn't sound good. Yo, and so Darren got really mad. He got offended. So we got back in the <laughs> car and said, you know what? He said, yo, Trey, my brother, you should leave that group. We should get in this talent show and beat those guys. And so they said, all right, all right, cool. You know, and it was the three of us. So we said, but we're doing Jodeci. So we need a fourth guy that can be in it. There was a guy from our church who was actually a DJ, um, Quint, LaQuinta Saxton. And we said, um, you want to be in the group? And he said, yeah. They reluctantly had me in the group, bro, because I was so so much younger. <laughs> they were like, "He's a, he, we're going to be cute because he's a kid, you know? <laughs> but ultimately, we got up in there, and me and my brother was like the JoJo and KC of the situation, you know what oh, I mean? the two singers. <laughs> and, uh, you know, for that talent show, you know, and yeah. we, we won, you know? And I still have that trophy, and that was when something clicked. This could be something, you know. I mean, and up to then, what what were you thinking about doing before that opportunity? Before that, I don't know that I was serious about anything in particular outside of, you know, the the music of the church. You know, maybe okay. because because see, my idols. I'll say our idols. When I say my idols, when I say our idols, I'm talking about all of us. All yeah. of our all the groups, all every group you will you will you can have sit down right here, yeah. from the nineties 
I'm not not necessarily the eighties, but from the nineties. If you have a a group member sit right here, they will tell you about commissioned. Yeah, that's what we were all about. Commissioned, take take six, the wine ins, all of those male groups that came out of gospel and those male singers that came out of gospel. We all wanted to be like them, even when we mm. all got record deals. We sang all their ad libs <laughs> and all their and all their harmonies. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, I've I've, I've, I've um, had Claude McKnight from Take Six on, oh. and just just find out that why? How is it that you guys, everyone seems to just say that they saw Take Six as like, you know, they wanted to be like you guys, and for them it was like they didn't really, you know, that to them was the singing was just something they just enjoyed doing, but for yourself yeah. was was that? Yeah, I mean, and I've always heard about commissioned and and how they change our gospel for you know they made our they made gospel cool <laughs> yes they did listen listen they are between take six i'll say between commission one take six in the winings because the winings is like the ogs to commission you know commission was in was in, inspired and influenced by the winings you know and they had a you know a, a direct connection with detroit and then with the women it was uh the clock sisters who were okay. also out of Detroit. They were all from Detroit, you know, and they were doing something different. But that cluster right there, they're really responsible in a lot of ways for modern R&B groups, all right, and solo artists. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of solo artists will sit here and tell, I'm, I'm pretty sure, uh, you know, I can name them, you know, that would sit here and tell you, Oh, we were listening to Commission. I was listening to Commission. If you if you put all the the male groups from the '90s in one room, yeah, and one of them just started singing a Commission song, we will all <laughs> in know all the. We will literally know all yeah. the arrangements, where the leads go. Who's to, I mean, we we we, we <laughs> that that was we studied it. You know, what about when uh, the Winans went to Teddy and did It's Time and don't step. Hey, and don't leave me and, and stuff. Did, did did how as coming from the church? Did they say, "Oh, this is a little too, too no. worldly"? Or what was? That? Not mine. Not my church. Like the the church that I was at was St. Paul Community Baptist Church in East New York, Brooklyn. And um, no, they didn't say that. My my uh, my my father was so progressive as the minister of music as the church. You know, at the yeah. church, he was so progressive until in 1983. Him and a woman by the name of, I love her dearly, um, Kathy Hall, a preacher out of Philadelphia. They wrote a song called The Rap Song, which they taught children the books of the Bible in rap form. Now, you got to think wow. about that. That's 1983. This is really before rap took off and went where it ultimately ended up going. So yeah. to think that we were doing that, my father created that, they created that in the church environment. And mm -hmm. it was a hit. People loved it in that environment. So much so that um, Robert Duvall, uh, the actor, he did a movie yeah. called The Apostle. And they used that song, the, 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 the children rap song in the movie while they were building a church. That's my father. My father and Kathy Hall wrote that. Just to let you know how progressive um, they were around. My father's favorite singers uh, was always Donny Hathaway and Stevie Wonder, musician-wise. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that I grew up with gospel, but I grew up with my father's record collection, which was everybody. Osley Brothers, Otis Redding, Sam Cooke. The list went on and on. So, nah, man, we were from an environment where they they embraced the wine is getting with Teddy Riley because Teddy <laughs> Riley sounded like gospel. He sound like gospel. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Teddy was it. Teddy will probably tell you he was inspired and influenced by the Winans and some of that Detroit gospel progressive sound. So them getting together made nothing but perfect sense. Yeah, I mean it was a global hit. I was in um, I think I was in Nigeria when its time came out, and that was massive around the world. Um, and I and I actually hadn't heard of the Winans until until that. Uh, we sing that. We sing that song first. <laughs> it's, it's time to make a change. We sang that song in church. Yeah, the the part where Carvin Carvin is the high voice guy. Yeah, uh, that was me because my voice hadn't changed. I was a kid. Wow. Okay, so you guys was I, still baby. 
Sing it I sung it. Yeah. That's the part they gave me. Everything else was too low. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of Halftime Chat. Please remember to subscribe, share, and comment. But most importantly, why don't you become a member of Halftime Chat? We've got amazing videos, amazing perks, and um, being able to support the channel. But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. I never participated in that.